Hi everybody, my name is Harry Jacobs and I am the North of 60 Gamer and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at, oh my god, what the heck has just come in? Now there has not been a lot because most of these are pre-orders and kickstarters except for a couple little things here and we're going to go over that. So right now we're just going to go down to the table, we are going to get right into this and let's get down to the table to, oh my god, I'm never going to get to all these games. Let's go. Fallout Shelter! Woohoo! It's new and shrink. It just came in. Uh, this is a game I've been interested in. Love! Uh, a game about post-nuclear survival. Fallout Shelter, of course. Fallout is the big PC game that's been around for a number of years. There's also the uh, Fallout game itself that I have with a couple of little expansions now. The California expansion, the Atomic Bonds expansion. This is really just about the shelter. What you're trying to do is make your people happy by building out rooms in the shelter giving them a place to play and work and just survive the fallout. So this is interesting. I am interested in the one-player variant, that uh, more for solo play. And I think that's going to work for this, and probably that's what we're going to do if I get this to the table. Now, this fallout shelter. I couldn't help myself. I, I did not pick this up at the uh, Kickstarter. This is Merchants of Magic. So basically, you're going to uh, be a store owner, and you're going to sell to various adventurers, things that you make and things that you buy. It's one to two players, 45 to 60 minutes, ages 13 and up. There are lots of player sheets. This is kind of a, well, it's not really a roll and write. It's kind of a serve and write, maybe. Uh, I'm not quite really sure, but we're going to get into this. It looked interesting. I do like... Uh, the Rock Manor games, and I should have picked this up when I had the last set of watch uh, game that came in. But as it is, it just came in. The price is not a lot of money on that. I'm very excited to get it. I can't wait to play it. That is the set of watch, Merchants of Magic by Clarence Simpson. Next, oh, I've been looking forward to this. It just came in. It was a pre-order from a billion years ago. Horrified American Monsters. We had to wait till I think it cleared the target six month uh, exclusive. One to five players, ages 10 and up. If you've played Horrified, this game offers all of the same stuff, except for now we're talking about American Monsters, such as the Chubacabra or the Mothman. And we're going to be playing this. I'm sure that we are going to be playing this on the table. And we're going to show you how it plays. Probably a solo version or the two-handed version. But Horrified is such a wonderful game. I do have a Horrified video out there. If you want to take a look at it, I will perhaps put it in the link at the end in the credits. So have a look for that. Take a look at the, the American Monsters. It's also, I just featured a, a couple of these games in my video that I'm just coming up is under $50 games that are in the store now. So the emphasis being not in on Kickstarters or not coming in from Kickstarters, but games that play really, really well, a lot of fun, and are under $50. That is horrified. I'm going to bring this one up. This was on pre-order for quite a while. Dune Imperium Rise of X. So we have a promo card here, of course, and this just adds an expansion to the Dune Imperium game. I am looking forward to adding this in. Apparently, it's supposed to be very, very good. It's one of those expansions that says, why are we playing with that now? So that is Dune Imperium Rise of Vix. Of course, it's Legendary Games. Dire Wolf. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to uh, really get to this game uh, and play. We'll just put that over here. Next up, the next expansion, Arc. San Architecture Tapestry. Who has not heard of Tapestry? If you have not heard of Tapestry, I advise you to go out and take a look at many of the playthroughs. Go over to Board Game Arena and learn how to play. This game is absolutely amazing. Now, it is not a Civ game the way you normally would think of a Civ game. It's more of a tableau resource building game in which you're going to move up tracks and do different actions in order to have the most victory points at the end. You're going to build out your city using really nice miniatures, and you can see some of the miniatures here. This is a wonderful game. I have played a lot of it lately on Board Game Arena, and I play a lot of it solo on... There's a really nice solo version of this out on Tabletop Simulator that's all well-scripted. 
But this is a fun game. Again, this is a very, very easy game to learn, really. Once you start playing it, you'll, the ease of playing is really, I'm going to move along a, a board that says I'm going to do something, and I'm going to do that something. End of turn. Earn resources. Play a tapestry card, which is a main way of maybe getting an advantage or taking advantage of something. And, of course, you're going to have a civilization that has different powers. But it's not really a civ game when you move from from era to era, or era to era, I suppose. So, that is Tapestry. This is the expansions. I am working to get this one onto the table. This uh, is Raiders of Scythia. This is a game that I'm very, very interested in. It's one of my wife's favorite style of games that comes off of the Raiders of the North Sea. Again, Renegade Games. They're starting to have a lot of Renegade Games. It's by Shem Phillips. I think Shem Phillips makes some great games. The Paladin series, or the um, Western Kingdom series with architects and paladins and viscounts. Uh, the Raider series, and of course the Raiders of Scythia now, which is a streamlined version of Raiders of the North Sea, except it takes place in Scythia, which I'm not quite sure exactly. I think it's Persia, perhaps. I'll check that out and let you know. And lastly, again, I'm working on a video for this now. I just started it. I just started the unboxing the other day. That's why you're not seeing shrink wrap on any of these games on either uh, Scythia or Wonderful Kingdom Legends. This is the Legends version. It just offers a little bit more than the core box. and But it's based similar to System 2. It's a wonderful world. This is a tableau style game. You're going to manage resources, build production, play cards, build monuments and and buildings in order to up your production to buy more to get more cards this one unlike wonderful world it's not a drafting this is where you're going to put cards down on either side of the board and then a player will take one side or the other and then the next player will go and then put two cards down either one on one side one on the other side or both on the same side and it goes like that for eight rounds and then you do your building and pr production phases or your production and building phases that kind of hand in hand there so that is a wonderful world uh legends and these are all games that have come in uh just in the last little while i don't think they all came in the last week some of them i've had sitting around for a while just it just takes some time to get to them i did a number of kickstarter uh, projects and i had five in a row so i haven't had a lot of time to get to stuff that i want to do personally in the, in the waiting grounds, I have Arkham Horror Case 2 is waiting to be edited. And eventually, once I get that done, Arkham Horror Case 3 is I'm going to play it. So, I have played Case 1. Arkham Horror Case 2 is in the editing, as I said. And Case 3 is going to be coming up. But that's it for the... Oh, my God. What the hell do I have on my table today? Please, uh, if you like what you see, please hit the like button. Click. Subscribe and show me some appreciation for the time I take to sort of bring these to your attention, even though this is a whirlwind edition of just what came into my house and what am I going to play. And again, just let me know how you feel about this particular video. Maybe you'll try with some of these games. I'm really getting into roll and write games, really starting to focus down on games that are less than $100. I'm not going to buy too many more big games that I'm never going to play that's going to sit on my shelf full of minis. It's just getting too expensive for me. Anyway, that's it for now. My name is Harry Jacobs. I am the North of 60 Gamer, and this is the North of 60 Gaming channel. We'll talk to you later. Oh, and by the way, it's been minus 30 all week. Yay!